The second project we're going to do for game design is something called Light Cycle. This is based on an old video game called Tron, and they made a movie out of it as well. The basic idea is that you have these bicycles that are leaving down a trail of light behind them, and you're trying to get your opponent to run into it. It's a little bit like Snake, if you've ever played that. What we're going to do is we're going to have one player using WASD and the other player using the arrow keys and adding then the walls as you go. So we're going to be using this text-based tutorial to walk through all of this. And this is kind of the way it's going to look. You're going to be controlling the cycle. If you actually run into one of the walls, that's the end of the game. So we're going to need to create a new project, and it's going to be a 2D project, and call it something like Tron Light Cycles. So let me start up Unity. I'm going to create a new project, Tron Light Cycles. It's not a 3D, it's going to be a 2D game, so let me switch to that. And I'm going to use the default documents location. I'm going to skip the new version for now. All right, I've got my main scene here, a game, my scene is over here, and here's my project. To begin with, we're going to alter our main camera so that we just see black in the background. So if we go to our hierarchy and our main camera, we're going to adjust the size and make it match this. So select my main camera, go to my inspector, and then I want to change this to black. And I'm going to change the size here to 80. The size alters how much space your camera is going to be looking at so that when you import and export things, it dictates how big this screen is based on that. So if you have a smaller size, anything you drag in will look much larger in comparison. We're going to take this kind of grid-like pattern and save this in and use that as one of our sprites for our picture, for our game. So save image as. I'm in the documents. I'm in Unity projects for mine. You may be in a similar thing for documents. And Tron Light Cycle. So I don't ha yet have a folder for this, so let me do that real quick. So if I go here to the project folder, I'm going to create a new folder for all of my sprites. So now I go back to here, and there it is. So if I go look at my sprites, I should now see the grid. And there it is. We're going to want to make sure that this is imported as a 2D and UI sprite. And we're going to do a pixels per unit of 2. And we're going to do the point filter mode. So I am a 2D and UI. Changes pixels per unit to 2. And instead of bilinear, we're going to change this to point, which has no filter. That way it doesn't blur the grid when I put it in. So now we're going to add it to the world by going from the project up into our hierarchy. So from here into here. I forgot to hit apply, so it's telling me to apply them. There we go, we have a grid. And if I run this real quick, you can kind of see the grid in the background here. One of the other things we're going to want to do is make sure that we don't accidentally draw the grid over the top of our light cycles. We want to make sure that those things stay on top. So we're going to change the order in the layer to be negative one so that it draws behind other things. So we're going to select our grid, look at the sprite renderer, and change that order. So grid is selected, sprite renderer, and make this negative one.
and just be sure that it is right. I can see the grid there. It's pretty faint, but that'll work. Next, we need to start putting in the different light walls that we're, players are going to use. So we're going to start with a 2x2 two two picture here. So I'm actually going to hover over this, right click, save image as or save target as, depending on which browser you're in. I'm going to put that in that same assets sprites folder. Once again, it's going to be a 2D and UI two pixels per unit and point. So if I select it here, sprite 2D and UI, two pixels per unit, and make it a point. So now we can actually drag it into our project area and see what it looks like. and apply that. Hey, there's a point. So right now, this is just being shown as an image. It doesn't actually have any properties yet. So in order to add some actual physics to it, we need to add a 2D box collider. So we're going to go to Add Component, Physics 2D, and a box collider 2D. So that's the basics of the object itself. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this a prefab. And what that means is it's kind of a blueprint for making other kinds of objects. If I wanted to create lots and lots of light walls, which I will want to soon, a prefab dictates what the default properties of those things are going to be. So anytime I want to create a new one, it comes in with all of those properties. So we're going to create a prefab folder and put it into that in our project area. So I'm going to do create a folder, prefabs, and put it into here. Notice that this turns light blue. That shows that this is a prefab rather than one of these regular objects. So we aren't going to actually use this object in our game quite yet. It, we just did that dragging into the game object area to set its properties. So we can actually delete it out of our main hierarchy. Those light walls will be created later on when we have regular objects. So I'm going to go to this light wall and delete it here. We still have our prefab in our project area. Now we need to do the same sort of thing with this particular object here. So I'm going to save it as an image. It needs to have those import properties. So that was two for the pixels per unit and point. I drag it into here. It shows up here. And I'm going to give this a Physics 2D box collider, and then drag it down here into the prefabs. And then now that I have a prefab, I can delete it out of here.